Good afternoon again, YouTube. Matt Emroy back. I want to do one more video uh, about this uh, recent thrift store find that I got about three days ago. This is, you guys can see this, a Dell Dimension 1100 desktop computer. Now, this is very similar to one that UXW Bill picked up a couple months ago, which is the Dimension B. B110. Actually, it's it's pretty much the exact same computer. Um, Dell has been using these cases. They actually used these from about 2001 to around 2006, and they came in many many different styles. There was uh, the original one, which I remember as the Dimension 2300, then the 2350. Those were kind of the first budget systems. And that was, those were around 2001 or 2002. Then in 2003, they came out with the Dimension 2400, which was probably the most successful of these systems. I think I've seen more of those than any other uh, Dell computer of this style. Um, those And these range anywhere from Celerons, like this, which is in this one, for, to Pentium 4s. Uh, and even the later ones were a hyper thread, some of them. Um, then they went to the Dimension 3000 series, and, which is the lower end, and then as UXW Bill mentioned, the 4600 was the higher end of that system. Well, you would think the 1100 would be an older system, but it's actually not. Um, this system came out in 2006. Um, again, like UXW Bill said, I don't know what Dell was thinking when they put this out, because this system was way, way antiquated the day that it came out. Um, we're talking about 2006, so there were Core 2 Duos at that point. We had a lot of Pentium Ds, and this is just a single core Celeron. Um, it was definitely a budget system, but I, I, I agree with UXW Bill. I think that um, what they were trying to do was use up some parts, maybe from um, an order that went wrong or something. But let's go ahead and get into this computer. I have done several upgrades. I actually do really do like this case design. Easy, it, it is so easy to open up. All you have to do, there's a little tab back here. You push this down, one finger, and the other finger, you just pull the side of the case off. Now trying to get a good angle here so bear with me everybody there we go okay uh, once you're inside the computer you can tell that it, it's pretty basic right here is the heat shield for the CPU and the fan and this is actually a pretty good design. This allowed them to be able to just put a, a, a larger heat sink on, but they didn't actually have to have a fan above the CPU. The CPU sits right in here. What this shield does is it actually directs the heat right out through this case fan right here. And you would think that it, it would get pretty hot, but actually it stays cool. I've even had the Pentium 4 hyperthread versions of this that got up to 3.2 gigahertz. And even those stay pretty cool, so i got to give Dell kudos for that design. Okay, under here we have one, two, three uh, PCI slots. There is no AGP in, uh, expansion this, in this computer, so... If you want to put a better video card in, a regular old school PCI card would be your only choice. Right up here you have the memory slots. In this computer I have 1.25 gigabytes. Um, this does max out at 2. You can put a 1 gig stick in each. I have a 1 gig stick back here and then the original 256 megabyte stick is right up here. In this particular system, there is no AGP. There is an artifact right here from where it, it should have been if the Dell decided to put it in, but in this case, they did not. Um, up here, see that, are your two DVD uh, or CD drive options. Now, this computer originally came with a CD burner, no DVD drive whatsoever actually replace that if you can see up front here 
with a Sony dual layer DVD burner. Now one of the more interesting things about this case is the hard drive. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. The hard drive itself, forgive the noise on the chair, I know it's a little squeaky. Hard drive itself sits right here in this cage. Now to get at it, there are two screws. There is one right here, if you can see that everybody, right here in the hard drive, right inside the computer. And you just got to unscrew that. There we go. And you want to take your time. So that's one screw. Now this is where everybody gets confused. Everybody will just start pulling here and saying, oh, it won't come out. And I've gotten a lot of questions uh, from friends of mine in the past regarding these cases. There is a hidden screw. You turn the case to the bottom here. Right there is the second screw that undoes this case, hard drive cage. Now, not every single one of these actually has this screw it used. Um, I actually replaced the hard drive in this one, so I had to add this screw. It wasn't there originally. Um, but if you have one of these systems and you undo that first screw and it won't come out, odds are that this one is, po is populated ahead and put this back up. And now you can pull the bottom out first. It comes out like that. And then you pull, kind of wiggle it a little bit, and you can pull the other part down. And there's your hard drive right there. Now to put it back in, it's really easy. Let's see if I can get a better picture. If you can see these tabs right here, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up 12, but you have to put it inside the case. These two tabs here. And then you just push the front back down like that. And one nice thing is you can actually buy an, uh, online another one of these cages. So you can actually have two hard drives in here, up to two. It won't go any more unless you have the bracket for the floppy drive, which is right up here. If you have that bracket, if it came with a floppy drive, which this model dis didn't, you could put a third hard drive in if you wanted to. And that's pretty much the inside of the Dell Dimension 1100. Let's take a look at the back real quick. Now here are some of the ports in the back. You have your old school serial port old school parallel printer port, uh, VGA, just standard VGA. Right here are your four diagnostic lights and this, this, these model Dells, actually pretty much every Dell I've ever seen has had these lights. It, they're usually marked A, B, C, and D. This particular one isn't. Um, but that's how it works. So let's say you're turning your computer on, your, any, any one of your Dells and you see the third light is amber while the rest are green. We well, can go onto Dell's website and look up your model, and in, in the instruction booklet, it'll tell you what that means. Third light could mean anything from a bad stick of memory to a problem with the processor. But all Dell's, to the best of my knowledge, have this feature, even the modern ones. Under that, you have your keyboard, mouse, PS2 port. Just your, under that, you have your standard microphone, headphone, and I believe that's for a surround sound port. Below that are 1, 2, 3, 4 USB 2.0 ports. Yes, this one is new enough to have 2.0. And right above that is your Ethernet port. And that is it. In this model, they don't use any expansion. There isn't even a modem in this particular model. All right, so that is a quick review. Oh, one more thing. Let me show you. If you ever have to take the front cover off here, there are two tabs. There's one right down here at the bottom, and then there's one right here at the top. You just push those, 
and the whole front of the case will slide off. And then that is actually how you access your optical drives and or floppy drive if your system is so equipped. All you have to do to take the optical drive out is there's two screws right here. One here and one here. You unscrew those and you just slide the optical drive out. Alright everybody, and that's pretty much all you'll need to know about this case design. If you have any questions, or please let me know. If there's anything you want me to describe further, just send me a personal message. Alright, I will go ahead on my next video and boot this up so you can see uh, exactly what I have on it. Alright everybody, take care.